These are the masters of speed. This is Formula One. Hello there. Hope you guys are good. Hope you guys are well wherever you are in the world today. Hope you're having a good one. So, Paul Ricard, France. Let's go. As per usual, three laps, five red lights. You can uh, really get it done, really send it. Car feels really good, stable. Turn one is a uh, real tricky uh, with no line, it's blind. And considering all the other circuits we've run and I've complained about understeer, this circuit, even though the downforce is quite high, understeer is not really a problem. Unfortunately, the AI are. They're extremely fast. As you can see, I've got one down my inside. The reason why the car was aren't behaving like that is because of me. Made a mistake. I locked the rears. That was on me, not the handling of the car. Long, long corner, turn 12 I think there is. Another one. So turn 13 and I think this one's turn 14 or, or 15. Again, that's me locking the rears. Too much on the brakes. But yeah, like I said, the setup is next, obviously, like it always is. But the car feels uh, extremely good. So understeer isn't a problem. Again, that's me on the brakes too much, locking them up. Here comes the AI, absolutely flying. Don't worry, got some if you're old, uh, fit a Got him covered. They are rapid though. And as I state in the setup video, and the setup, the AI, I don't need to worry about anything. They're just programmed to follow a line. I don't need to worry about tire wear. They don't need to worry about downforce, whether it's raining, whether it's uh, dry. The AI parameters are not the same as ours. Okay, you just started the final lap of the race. Final lap. Boschon did a 45, what did you do, a 45 5 then or something? Did I see? Slipstream is really uh, prevalent around here as well. Really, really good slipstream is. Not only is uh, the undercut extremely powerful around here, however, the circuit really, really isn't kind to tyres. It really, really isn't.
managed to keep Fittipaldi behind. And again, this is what the setup can do. Well, it's what you can do in the setup. But do not be afraid to change the setup to suit your driving style. Have to make changes to make sure that the setup is right for you. This has been France. It's been Paul Ricard. Really hope the setup helps. The setup is next. Do all that good stuff. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Catch you in the next one. Oh, Take fantastic. care. And I have to wonder, Davide Valsecchi, just what set them apart from the competition here? This race, this week, was about one thing and one thing only. Consistency. Anyone can be quick for just one lap. But there's a difference between that and being quick every lap, over and over and over. If you can do that, if you can gain ground when your opponents make mistakes, but then not make mistakes on your own, you can just push and push. As we can see, it's time for the podium. And I can see the Carlin team underneath our commentary box going crazy as their driver walks out. It was a great win, and it means a great deal to this team. And now, Davide Valsecchi, let me ask you, who is your driver of the day? Lots of driver impressed me today, Alex. But if I have to say one that impressed me most, it's Zane Maluni. And after all that excitement, I think it's time for a lie down. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you when Formula 2... Yo, right, this is the France setup then. France is a weird, tricky circuit, especially for F2 cars. And obviously, F2 still races at uh, Paul Ricard. So, here it is. Gone with uh, 32 on the front and 25 on the rear. Straight away, some people might be saying, and especially if you've watched the three laps before, just on how quick the AI is, you need this kind of downforce for this game. You have to also remember that AI, they take no prisoners. They are extremely fast. They um, don't need to worry about tyre weight, downforce, hot, cold, wet, dry. They, it's, it's completely irrelevant to the AI. You need this level of downforce for sector one and also the tricky parts of sector two. And unfortunately, when it comes to setups, sometimes you have to sacrifice straight line speed for stability and cornering because cornering and stability will get you a lot more out of a lap, every lap than um, straight line speed. Yes, there are a number of straights at Paul Ricard, but I would rather, there are a lot more corners. There are a lot more corners than straights. And trust me, it's in those corners per lap where you make it up. Nobody wants uh, to set a car up for a straight line speed and then be sliding through the corners and have excess tire wear and, and, and yeah. So this is why I've gone with such um, high downforce, 32.25. For those of you um, who can handle uh, a lot lower downforce, probably run 28 25 28 24 maybe me personally i'm happy with 32 25 um so yeah it is what it is make sure you guys though change it to whatever you want and remember if you change it and it's wrong you can always go back on the diff i've gone or transmission rather i've gone with um 80 20 again for those of you who want to you can run 60 40 i wouldn't recommend going 20 80 or 40 60 um, 60-40 or 80-20 but for the uh, uh, for this setup I've gone with 80-20 then we've gone back to traditional right right left left there's nothing more to say about that for those of you who want just like in the uh, China setup I played around a lot with the toe 
and the camber um, if you really wanted to you could add a couple of clicks of rear toe if you're finding that you are uh, unstable at the rear although if you find yourself needing more downforce at the rear just in click click up the um, rear downforce on the suspension then it's, it's quite a firm setup again but not as firm as china nowhere near as bad as china um and the wings help quite a lot but on the front suspension i've gone with 34 on the rear suspension i've gone with 20 it's quite a firm um rear suspension on the front roll bar i've gone with 15 again that's quite firm considering it only goes to 21 i've gone with uh, a softer uh anti-roll bar though uh, at five, ride out is 34, and rear ride out of 39. You could probably bring the ride out down to about there. That would probably give you a little bit more straight line speed because you have to remember the more ride out you had add in, obviously it jacks the rear of the car up and then obviously causes more drag. So if you can level it out, that's absolutely fine. But for the sake of this setup, I've gone with 34, 39. There are some curbs that you need to ride over. I wouldn't recommend going any lower than 33 on the right on the front ride out though. And yeah, it seems to work well. But as I say, every setup, and I will keep on reiterating, it's your setup. Change it. Do whatever you like to it. Try to get it to work for you. But I felt that this suspension, roll bar, and ride height worked best for this setup. Onto the brakes then. Got my 56. I do change it throughout the race. Um, especially turn 1. And the last turn. Which is turn 14 or 15 I think. I, I do increase it to 57, 58. But then I turn it back down to 56 during the race. Obviously if you watch the 3 laps before you'll know. And then onto tyres. This is what I've gone with for tyre pressures. The reason why uh, I've gone so high at a circuit like Paul Ricard is because the, the straights force the tyres to cool down. Obviously, cornering generates tyre heat and not straights. So this is what I've gone with. And it seemed to work rather, rather well. Again, if you're not happy, change it. Do all the stuff that you need to do to get the car to feel right for you. This feels right for me, but it might not feel right for everybody. This has been Paul Ricard. Apologies that it's taken so long, but uh, we'll get Port and Mel done. Should be done by the end of this week, hopefully. Fingers crossed. Just life gets in the way of life sometimes. Uh, do all our good stuff. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. And yeah, I'll catch you in the next one. Guys, you're absolute legends. Take care. Okay.